Well, once again, I welcome you into this uh, late night presentation. And uh, from today, I want to just uh, cover some material on uh, or a, a, a series on uh, a need for a uh, Sabbath reform, a need uh, for uh, Sabbath reform. We know that uh, there are many things that we are seeing today happen in our Sabbaths. When we attend the church, things that uh, we need to talk about. And so i like us to have this uh, friendly presentation on uh, a need for Sabbath reform. And I know that uh, the Lord of heaven and earth is going to continue guiding our minds and uh, are speaking to our hearts so that we may know what is truth and the truth may set us free. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, thank you for your love that uh, you forbear with us for so long, your long suffering. It is because of your mercies that we are not consumed, Lord. And uh, we do not want sin to abound so that grace may increase. We who are dead to sin, Lord, we want to walk in the freedom of which you have been called in by the merits of the blood of thy son. And so cleanse us and wash us and help us to seek you day and night that uh, perhaps in peradventure we may have Christ formed within the hope of glory. We may not continue troubling upon thy precepts, but Lord, we may walk as Jesus Christ walked. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so uh, I'd like us to talk about uh, a need for Sabbath reform because uh, it is an issue. The end time issue is about uh, the Sabbath, true worship and false worship. The, the way we approach the Lord shows the kind of respect we have for him. The way we conduct ourselves in his presence really will show who we are most if uh, it is serving self or if it is serving Jesus Christ. When you read the book of Isaiah chapter 6, you see how the angels really come into the presence of the Lord. And uh, you can also check uh, the book of Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5 and see how the holy angels who have never fallen into sin approach the throne of grace and approach God in heaven. Um, I'd like to just read something in Nehemiah chapter 13 verses 15 to 19. And uh, like us to share in the word of God. Um, this is uh, what uh, we find. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants said, I at the gates, that uh, there should be no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. And so in, in, the, in the days of Nehemiah, we, we had this prevalent business that was going on just uh, at the sanctuary, at the gates of the sanctuary, where people came with the merchandise and were able to start selling. And so in the text that we have read, we see that uh, the gates of Jerusalem began um, to be shut when uh, the day began to be dark in order to prevent buying and selling on the Sabbath day. This was not done in the morning at sunrise, but rather at even at the sunset. And so the holy hours do not start in the morning, but they start in the evening. That is when uh, Nehemiah saw it fit for the gates to be shut. And so we can be sure that the Sabbath starts at uh, sunset 
to sunset because he's not commanding at the sunrise the gates to be shut, but the, at the sunset to prevent the, the, the selling. And so uh, one thing our minds have to be uh, tuned in to the worship of the Lord as Friday sunset comes, that uh, we may not carry any burden into the Sabbath that uh, doesn't have sanctity of the Sabbath in it. The buying and selling, the merchandise and uh, the businesses going on in our minds have to stop on that day, On that is Friday sunset. But you find that we carry on till the morning. We, we think that it is in the morning that the Sabbath starts when we are told that uh, it is in the evening that the Sabbath starts. And also in the book of um, Matthew chapter 27, verses 57 to 58. Matthew chapter 27. And uh, I'm looking at um, verses 27, verses 57 to 58. When the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and uh, begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. Matthew 27, verses 57 to 58. And Luke chapter 23, verses 53 to 54. And he took it down and wrapped it in a linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew nigh or began to dawn. Luke chapter 23, verses 53 to 54. And so from this text also, you find that um, it was at the even when the sun was setting that the body of Christ was uh, requested for to be buried. In the first passage, it's claimed that even is basically as the sun disappearing, while other texts all show that Pilate first had to get a centurion to prove Jesus was dead at that hour. And uh, being that uh, the even was come, uh, they were allowed to take down the body and uh, go for burial. And so, uh, we find that uh, as, as we approach the sunset of, uh, uh, of Friday, ushering in the night that starts the Sabbath day because the day starts at the sunset to the sunset, we are sure that we are entering in the realm where the Lord puts sanctity on the day in Genesis chapter 2. Whatever will happen, will transpire in this period, our minds have to be tuned in to the things of heaven and not earthly things. So uh, from even the crucifixion, uh, from these texts of crucifixion, you find that um, the disciples of Jesus Christ didn't want to pollute themselves or to be engrossed in some uh, business that did not have anything to do with the, their spiritual rest and their physical rest on that day. Although you can be sure that um, the day that Jesus Christ rested in the tomb was uh, such a solemn, uh, sad day after the events that had happened on Friday and his crucifixion and his uh, uh, sacrifice being um uh tossed about here and there in the hands of the wicked men and so um there is something that we learn from the Waldensians and uh, I like I like to read this history because um it really gives us that uh uh knowledge of uh, how those who lived near to the disciples who are able to live. In Great Controversy, page 67, we are told the pure, simple, and fervent was the piety of the followers of Christ. The principles of truth they valued above the houses and lands, 
friends, kindred, even life itself. These principles they earnestly sought to impress upon the hearts of the young. From earliest childhood, the youth were instructed in the scriptures and taught to regard sacredly the claims of the law of God. Copies of the Bible were rare, therefore it is precious words were committed to memory. Many were able to repeat large portions of the both Old and the New Testament. Thoughts of God were associated alike with the sublime sinner of nature and with the humble blessing of daily life. Little children learned to look with gratitude to God as the giver of every favor and every comfort. And uh, just before I make some point in um, uh, Youth Instructor, April 28, 1898, paragraph 6, in the School of Prophets, there was a school of the prophets at Gilgal and also at Bethel and at Jericho. Elijah wished to visit these important places before he was parted from them. His spirit was cheered as by the direction of God, he was permitted to see the schools of the prophets and the work that was going on in those institutions. And uh, education, which was to give, keep the wonderful works of God continually before the students, and which magnified the law of God and make it honorable. The education was of that order which would preserve the souls of all who would be obedient to the law of God. While adultery was prevailing to an alarming extent, Elijah would see the word of the Lord verified. I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bound unto Baal. And so this worship of self, this considering of ourself first instead of considering God first, is a species of idolatry. And um, we find that the Waldensians who had uh, the pure religion are uh, actually the old men taught the young ones the sanctity of God's law. Just the way you approach the other laws of God, however much they are, however many they are, or few they are. There is no partiality in um, observing one law from the other. The, the very sanctity you approach, the first commandment, the second and the third, is the very sanctity that you should uh, approach the fourth commandment and the other commandment. You put a shield upon them, a protection, an edge around them so that you may not found yourself really on the wrong side but you keep your eye on Christ and him guiding, you are able to guard the edges of this law. And so, shall we not be doers of the word? Uh, shall we not make the Bible our counsel on what should be done and what should not be done? The word of God is the foundation of all true knowledge and Christ teaches that men must do what men must do to be saved. And then uh, if uh, you read uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses uh, 6, we are told that um, whoever says that he abides in him must walk as he walked. And uh, we can see Jesus Christ even himself being able to surrender his will and submit his will unto his father always and not uh, going against extremities going beyond what is prescribed in the word of God. Now, one of the things that have made uh, even the observant of the Sabbath difficult is um, having the children where actually they are allowed to go to school while uh, we ourselves go to the church on Sabbath, but we send our children to the schools. We are looking at uh, a need for the Sabbath reform. How should it be the people who have children and all this stuff? Uh, in Great Controversy, page 306. Great Controversy, page 206. Uh, we are told that uh, schools in all our churches, in all our churches, there should be schools and teachers in these schools who are missionaries. 
It is essential that teachers be trained to act well their part in the important work of educating the children of Sabbath keepers, not only in the sciences, but in the scriptures. These schools established in different localities and conducted by God-given, God-fearing men or women are the case as the case demands. Should we should be built, uh, I'll repeat, these schools established in different localities and conducted by God-fearing men or women, as the case demands, should be built on the same principle as were the schools of the prophet. So we find that wherever there is our church, there should be a school where actually our children can be taught in those schools and then be allowed to attend the church on Sabbath. But uh, when uh, we take our children to school, Schools, we allow them to go to schools and then we go to the church. We are laying a foundation for them. By the way, it's breaking God's command. You, you can't give any excuse that the teacher said this or the teacher said that, that my child should go or the exam are on, on Sabbath and all this stuff. No, it's just like you tell somebody, okay, I have allowed my child to go and commit adultery. I have allowed the child to uh, name the name of the Lord God in vain. I have allowed my child to steal. You know, the moment you start giving an excuse for the Sabbath, then there is no way you can stop at the Sabbath. You'll have to go all the way through the other commandments, the commandments before and the commandments after. And so it is church schools in the cities. It is of the greatest importance that church schools should be, shall be established to which the children may be sent and still be under the watch care of their mothers and have opportunity to practice the lessons of helpfulness that is God's design they shall learn in the home. And so we should not take that um, the education of this world is so much important that the, 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 the teachers in these schools can threaten our children that uh, if they don't attend the schools on Sabbath, then they'll face discipline. There, there is nothing of that sort. But uh, these problems we have created again uh, ourselves because um, uh, we are the ones who are told to build the schools and we are not building them. We, we send them to these schools where the law of God is not uh, paramount. It's not uh, seen as something which is important. And so much more can be done to save and educate the children of those who at present cannot get away from the cities. This is a matter worthy of our best efforts. Church schools are to be established for the children in the cities and in connection with these schools, provision is to be made for the teaching of higher studies where they are, these are called for. Again, provide schools, provide schools for small churches. Many families who, for the purpose of educating their children, move to places where our large schools are established, will do better service for the master by remaining where they are. They should encourage the church of which they are members to establish a church school in where the children within their borders will receive an all round practical Christian education, it will be vastly better for their children, for themselves, and for the cause of God if they will remain in the smaller churches uh, where, they help, where their help is needed instead of going to the larger churches where because they are not needed, there is a constant temptation to fall into spiritual inactivity. Also, we find that um, these uh, churches that... Um, are going to be established should be small churches where actually they are not mammoth churches where people will not grow spiritually, where the, the, the person in charge of their spiritual mentorship cannot be able to, in, to, to, to reach to their spiritual condition uh, individually. And so mammoth churches are discouraged to be built. We should build churches where and I had this propo uh, um, proposal from different people, and I think uh, it should be somewhere uh, either in uh, Pioneer's uh, works or in EUH's work that um, a church do not have to have more than 30 members. Reason being that um, if, the pastors, if the pastor, we have only one pastor in that church, he should be able to have, to have 30 members or less so that Throughout the month, he may be able at least to visit each church member. When the church has 200 people, 300 people, and all these numbers, the pastor cannot attend to individual uh, person. Just like in schools, 
um, we, you, you know, the world education has really messed up with everything so that we, we don't learn a lot. And uh, the, the, the classes in the world schools are crowded so that the teachers may cannot have an individual effort with the students. And also we find that in our churches, this is the way it is that um, it is so crowded that uh, you don't uh, find the pastor has a good opportunity with, uh, with each individual in the church to train them up to be Bible workers and to be responsible to their talents and to their gifts that the Lord has given to them. So mammoth churches should not be built, but uh, small churches where actually the flock can be fed, the lamb can be fed. Wherever there are few Sabbath keepers, the parents should unite in providing a place for a day school where the children and youth can be instructed. They should employ a Christian teacher who, as a consecrated missionary, shall educate the children in such a way as to lead them to become missionaries. Let teachers be employed who will give a thorough education in the common branches, the Bible being made the foundation of the life uh, and the life of all study. This is Sir Child Guidance, page 307, paragraph uh, 2. Again, in the same book, Child Guidance, uh, uh, I'll screen this. We are told, in localities where believers are, believers are few, let two or three churches unite in erecting a humble building for a church school. So you find that in this Sabbath reform, uh, one of the things that uh, will make our young youth, youths and uh, our children uh, to be Sabbath keepers is to have a church school where they can learn all branches of education. And then on the Sabbath, they are free to join in in the Sabbath um, uh, observance. If parents will realize the importance of these small educating centers cooperating to do the work that the Lord desires to be done at this time, the plans of the enemy for our children will be frustrated. That is Child Guide and page 307, paragraph 4. And then also we have a home church school. As far as possible, all our children should have the privilege of a Christian education. To provide this, we must sometimes establish home church schools. It will, uh, it will be well if several families in a neighborhood would unite to employ a humble, God-fearing teacher to give to the parents that help that is needed in educating their children. This will be a great blessing to many isolated groups of Sabbath keepers and a plan more pleasing to the Lord than that which has been sometimes uh, followed of sending young children away from their homes to attend one of our larger schools. Child Guidance, page uh, 307, paragraph 5. Our small, our small companies of Sabbath keepers are needed to hold up the light before their neighbors and the children are needed in their homes where they may help be a help their parents when the hours of study are ended. The well-ordained Christian home where young children can have parent, parental discipline that is after the Lord's order is the best place for them. And this is Child Guidance, page 308. And so uh, over and over we, we are find that, finding that uh, if uh, we will need to uh, really gain the spirituality of these young men and women, we must have uh, our church is connected with the um, school so that uh, our children may not be forced to go to these public schools where, again, they are forced to attend churches on the Sabbath. And so, but you may say that uh, we have countries where actually free education has been prohibited. And uh, it is a must that um, uh, we must uh, let our children go to the public school and then. Uh, you find them missing on the Sabbath also. They have gone to schools to do exams and all this stuff. Um, and then you will find that uh, Sister White talks about time and place for this course should be considered. Yes, but then as much as the laws are stringent, we can have the best for our children so that uh, we can team up together and establish schools and have a charter and then be able to hire Adventist teachers. You know, we invest so much in this world education, but we don't want to invest in true education. 
which actual true education is not just living a life here on earth, but a life here and after. Here is just a preparation for living a life after. But we are so concerned with the, this temporal life until we forget the requirements of the Lord. And we see that uh, if uh, we can attend these schools, then uh, we can make it in life. No, no way. That is not the thing. And so we have to think about these things that um, we are presenting a need for Sabbath reform. How are we going to help our children? And so when you read uh, Isaiah chapter 58, it contains present truth for the people of God. And uh, part of uh, those who are Sabbath school um, attendants and uh, members, medical missionary is enjoined to uh, true Sabbath keeping. In fact, uh, it will be the impetus to proclaiming the Sabbath more fully. And so medical missionary should be united with the gospel work. And uh, it is in this Sabbath school that we learn different things that we will go to share with others who are still in sin, those who are burdened. You know, Christ says in, uh, I think it is Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, come unto me who are heavy laden um, and uh, are having heavy yoke, then I'll, I'll give you rest. It is the spiritual and uh, physical rest. And so when uh, the Sabbath school is conducted the way it is, uh, should be conducted in a well-ordained manner, then the young men and women and uh, everyone will be able to receive an education on Sabbath school and uh, medical missionary work that uh, will propel him during the week to work for the Lord and uh, energize him to work in the right lines. And so if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and the darkness as be as the noonday, Isaiah chapter 58, verses 10. And so all around us are hard the ways of world's sorrow. On every hand are the needy and distressed. It is ours to aid in living and softening life's hardship and misery. Like, um, you know, we are told that we should study Isaiah chapter 58 because... Uh, the, the these texts are really enjoined to the Sabbath keeping and medical missionary work is uh, enjoined to Sabbath keeping and gives a loud cry to, to the Sabbath keeping. And you ask yourself, how will clothing the poor, feeding the hungry, visiting those in prison bring a, about a loud cry on the Sabbath? You know, we can have schools where people are taught how to cook and uh, people are taught how to see you, and people are taught all this uh, relief work. And uh, it is not our duty by the way to go and distribute clothes on the Sabbath. Although where needs be, it can be done. If uh, a people can only be found on that day to be given a cloth or to be visited in a pro prison, then we can do it. Anything that relieves, gives life, uh, uh, something better, offer some life something better, where actually it's not merchandise and businesses. We are told that this work can be done on the Sabbath. And so we can have good cooks making good meals and uh, the Sabbaths be a special days for inviting the neighbors to have a lunch with us. Just having lunch, it doesn't mean that you will have to preach unto them. And as they continue doing that, they'll be attracted to our religion. They will uh, try to inquire which kind of God we are serving. And the Lord knows how to draw many into the nets. Christ's method alone will bring uh, uh, true success. And so practical work will have far more effect than mere sermonizing. So when we enjoin medical missionary uh, in proclaiming the Sabbath, uh, actually it will give it a uh, a, a, a right uh, arm of the message. And so there are many in whom the sunshine have, no, have, have net shined on them and uh, these lives was are upon them. We can uh, make uh, a special Sabbaths for them where they can just come and enjoy some good time with us and have a social meeting. Uh, and uh, pray with them and um, converse with them. And then uh, they can be released to go their way. 
Uh, and you know, the Sabbath school doesn't only include Seventh day Adventists, but also in it uh, encompasses uh, anyone who can come in and join in and share in the word of in, in the blessings of the Lord. And so, one thing that can be done on the Sabbath, as I bring this to an end, is um, literature can be literature can be supplied on this day. Um, in our pamphlet, uh, Pastoral Ministry, page 317, in the past, a large work has been accomplished in the distribution of the printed page. This is in line. This is a line of service in which every church member can have some part. All cannot go out as canvassers for our larger books, but there is a field of useful open before many of our brethren and sisters in placing a truth-filled publication in the homes of their neighbors and friends. As some um, others are preparing for lunch and uh, the lunch is being said, even for going to invite these people, maybe just a reminder to the, those who are in the neighborhood, we can take printed pages and uh, give it unto them just within the vicinity of where we are worshiping the Lord. And so um, uh, those who have long known the truth need to seek the Lord most earnestly that their hearts may be filled with the determination to work for their neighbors. We should not just pass them without kindness. Those who live near us are to be touched their hearts by our deeds. We are told in the book of Matthew chapter 5, let your light shine, Matthew 5, 14, so that um, uh, people may see your good works and give glory to your Father which is in heaven. And so we can be a bridge to those who are, are having uh, challenges in their life. In uh, councils, um, this is, um, allow me to share with you something in uh, CSW. That is, um, Cancels on Sabbath school work. Let me share this. Cancels on Sabbath school work, page 61, paragraph one. The object of the Sabbath should, the, the object of Sabbath school work should be the in gathering of souls. The order of working may be faultless. The facilities, all that could be desired, but if the children and youth are not brought to Christ, the school is a failure. For unless souls are drawn to Christ, they become more and more an impressionable um, under the influence of formal religion. The teacher should cooperate as he knocks at the door of the heart of those who need help. If uh, people respond to the pleading of the spirit and open the doors of the heart, that Jesus may come in, he will open their understanding that they may comprehend the things of God. The teacher's work is simple work, but if it is done in the spirit of Jesus, depth and efficiency will be added to it by the operation of the spirit of God. And so we find that um, these Sabbath schools are uh, means of uh, drawing the students who attend our schools to Christ. There should be much personal work done in the Sabbath school. The necessity of this kind of work is not recognized and appreciated as it should be. From a heart filled by, with the gratitude for the love of God, which has been imparted to the soul, the teacher should labor tenderly and earnestly for the conversion of uh, his scholars. And so um, I would like to stop at this as uh, we shall be continuing on a need for Sabbath reform and uh, what the Lord is calling us to do at such a time as this. What I understand is that uh, much has not been done in the lines of uh, using the entering wage to reach unto other peoples who are not of our denomination. And uh, just um, um, sewing clothes and visiting prisons and visiting the orphans the widows and the fatherless and distributing these things during the week prepares their heart for them to be invited to the Sabbath school. So the work of Isaiah chapter 58 should be done. 
but also, as I started, I said that uh, we should place a sanctity on the Sabbath because the Sabbath itself is holy and sanctified and set apart. And so it is not a day for us to continue with our businesses, our worldly uh, thoughts, and uh, the darkness should end upon us when uh, uh, our thoughts have not been centered upon heaven. We should uh, think of finishing our work as early as possible that we may put a, 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 a constraint upon uh, our minds and um, uh, upon venturing on to businesses that has nothing to do with uh, keeping the Sabbath holy. And then we have talked about uh, doing medical missionary work and printing literatures which uh, can be supplied in homes uh, as you prepare the people to even come for a lunch on the Sabbath and we have a social meeting together and people witness of the great things that the Lord is doing unto them. And so may the Lord help us to think about these things. We are told that uh, in all, for us to keep, uh, for, for us to embrace the holiness of the Sabbath upon our children, also we should have uh, uh, schools and joined unto our churches so that the children may come to the school on normal days and then uh, they may be invited on the Sabbath. And if they are Sabbath keepers, they may, they, they should be, taught how to keep the Sabbath holy and attend uh, the Sabbath uh, school and the Sabbath sessions. And so may, may the Lord be with us with those few remarks. And uh, I know that um, the human strength is not enough to accomplish that which is the will of God. But if we give everything to the Lord, he will enable us to do them. And so let us surrender to the Lord. Let us pray that he gives the finances that are needed, that we may do that which is needed for a time like this. You know, right now we are complaining, but uh, we are told that the the, um, the things that the church have failed to do in time of peace, they will have to do under the most forbidding circumstances. And many of us who have not seized the opportunity to do these things will do them in tears and will be like uh, the foolish virgins. Let the love of Christ fill our hearts that uh, we may say like Paul, the love of Christ constrains it me. Not that we are pushed to do things. Out of love, you do the things. Christ is not forcing anyone to do anything. Forced is the last resort of every false religion. And Christ is not in the business of being a watchman or a, a, a tyrant somewhere just looking for your mistakes so that he may punish you or uh, driving you. No, Christ really pleads with his sheep. He leads them. He doesn't drive them. And so may we allow his spirit to draw us to himself and rather than to draw uh, ourselves to ourselves and be filled with this selfishness and even rob God of his uh, holiday. May the Lord bless us, shall we pray. Thank you again, Heavenly Father, as we continue with the, the learning on, on, on a need of Sabbath school reform. The Lord will teach us your perfect will. Your grace shall be with us. And so touch your children, even as we shall face momentous times in these end times. We put everything at the altar. You who knows the end from the beginning, that you may help us to fix our eyes on thee. Help us, Lord, to be revived once again. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen. May the good Lord bless you until we meet again.